Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. And trophies! 2024 has turned out to be a fantastic year for remasters of my favorite video games of all time, as Broken Sword The Shadow of the Templars joins the classic Tomb Raider games with a wonderful remastering, or reforging in this case. I love this game so much, so the prospect of adding it to my collection of Platinum trophies made me very excited, but I know what you're thinking. How hard could it be to earn all the trophies in a point-and-click adventure game that I already knew all the puzzle solutions to? Well, first of all, it had been ages, and one of the puzzles is… the goat puzzle. A puzzle so evil that it has its own Wikipedia page, and I couldn't remember how exactly to solve it. Besides the Platinum Trophy itself, Broken Sword The Shadow of the Templars Reforged came with 26 trophies that looked straightforward enough, but one of them was downright mad, which I'll get to later. The only other Broken Sword game that has a Platinum Trophy is Broken Sword 5 The Serpent's Curse, which I got years ago, and the hardest thing about that was getting that wretched Jasmine song out of my head again after I'd finished playing the game. Enough. If you haven't played Broken Sword before, I need to warn you about spoilers in this video. I will keep Puzzle Solution spoilers to a minimum, but still, you are warned. I got my first trophy right after the game's explosive opening when I had to be brutally honest with a poor waitress inside the blown up cafe to earn the Truth Bomb trophy. After then being interrogated by Inspector Rousseau and his big-nosed sergeant, Mu, I met Nico Collard for the first time. She goes on to become the second half of the game's iconic duo alongside George Stobart, but she also, eventually, becomes his beautiful, fuck hey remastered love interest. Keep an eye on my hull! But before any of that, I had to explore the sewers in search of the killer clown, endure a conversation with the biggest suck-up in Paris, and play bad cop with the clown's tailor. Then I visited Nico and solidified George's partnership with her, and got an iconically titled trophy for it. I then spent the next hour or so trying to uncover the identity of the clown bomber, which first led me to the costume shop La Rise des Monde, where George got shocked with a hand buzzer. This began the most arduous trophy task in the game, as I needed to remember to try and use the buzzer on every single character for the rest of my playthrough. It was really important that I remembered to do this, because if I missed just one character, I would need an entire second playthrough. I eventually found out that the identity of the clown was the man simply known as Khan, and I also got my hands on a medieval manuscript from the bombing victim's suitcase. I thought that I would unlock the fish food trophy upon getting caught with the manuscript by Flap and Guido outside the killer's hotel, for obvious reasons, but I didn't. I did unlock the Khan's manuscript trophy, however, upon returning to Nico with it. I then visited the Kroon Museum in hopes of finding one medieval manuscript expert, André Lobino, but since he wasn't there, I had to learn on my own that the tripod from the manuscript was on display in this very museum. So off to the place where it had been discovered I was, Lochmarn, Ireland. Here I not only had to locate Professor Pegram's gem, but also figure out how to unlock the annoying social work trophy which tasked me with getting to know all of the locals. The problem was that even after talking extensively with every single person I could find, the trophy wouldn't unlock. It got to a point where I was so frustrated with this trophy that the constant fiddling inside the McDevitts and sneezing began to drive me absolutely mad. Apparently, what I needed to do for the trophy to pop was learn the names of all the locals, and while I knew the names of Maguire, Fitzgerald, O'Brien, ugh, Doyle, and Leary, I still didn't know the name of the pup's resident serial sneezer. It wasn't until I talked to Leary about the bar towel of all things that I learned that the snotster's name is Ron. Is that water running out of your nose, Ron? No, it's not. I then simply kept ordering beers in the bar until Leary said something about pinball, pimples, and puke for another trophy. 
This Ireland chapter was pretty heavily themed on bodily fluids for some reason, and blood got added to the list when poor Fitzgerald got run over just outside the pub and dropped Professor Pissgram's gem. This dramatic incident was what caused Fitzgerald's farmer uncle to finally leave his Tower of Hay unattended so I could get inside the Lochman castle and take on the goat. Allow me to gloat, because I beat that damn goat. I'm not gonna show you how to do it, however. No, I want you to suffer as much as I did when I was a kid. Anyway, once George returned to Paris with the Loch Marne gem in his pocket, the Pegram's gem trophy unlocked. It's at this point in Broken Sword that a complicated plot begins to reveal itself, involving the Knights Templars, or their deranged self-proclaimed successors, rather. I went over to the Hagenmeyer Clinic in search of Marquet, the mysterious man Fitzgerald was supposed to hand the gem over to. What's really cool in this remaster is that Marquet's room in the hospital has been upgraded from a cutscene to a fully explorable location. And what do you know, I got a trophy for doing just that. Marquet was then murdered by the Neo-Templar Eklund in disguise as a doctor, but before he died, George learned from him that the Neo-Templars were planning on stealing the tripod from the crew museum. So I had to figure out a way to get locked inside the museum overnight and intervene that robbery. This didn't turn out so good as Catwoman showed up and took the tripod for herself. This was not Selina Kyle, however, but Nico. Croon Raider! Now is that a great homage to a certain fellow artifact thief, or what? I then randomly got the fish food trophy for asking Inspector Rousseau about Professor Pigram. I was a little disappointed that this trophy hadn't been triggered by being killed by Flavin Guido earlier, but at least I got the impressing nobody trophy when George got murdered by the Neo Templars for clumsily walking in on their secret meeting in the catacombs. After reloading my save, I instead watched their meeting from safety and got the Templar Shadows trophy as my reward. This led George to Marib Syria, a charming little village with larger-than-life characters, such as Nijo, -peep, sir. Arto, kebab, most good. and American tourists Dwayne and Pearl. Ow! Basically, all I needed to advance from this area was 50 bucks so I could pay Altar the cab driver to take me to Bull's Head Hill, but apparently George doesn't bring cash when he travels the world. So to get some cash, I had to sell Dwayne something that he could gift his antiquity-loving wife. By causing a catastrophe at Nijo's gift shop, I got my hands on a cheap figurine that I then needed to tamper with to pass off as an ancient antiquity. Oh, and I also needed to visit the restroom of Club Alamud for reasons. But before I was allowed to access their restroom, I had to retrieve their toilet brush from Arto, who had stolen it and was using it to prepare his meat. What the fuck, dude? In order to get the toilet brush away from him, I needed help from Nijo to concoct a plan that would prompt Arto to chase after George so Nijo could swoop in and take it. I got the bad language trophy here, but couldn't George just have brought some cash instead of all this bullshit? The story then reached a fever pitch at Bullshit Hill, when I not only found the lens from the manuscript, but also squared off against Khan himself. This was the one time where a certain stupid inventory item came in very handy. George's globetrotting adventure then took him to Spain and my future home in my dreams. Here I earned the hide and sneak trophy once I successfully managed to sneak past the unfriendly gardener at the Via de Vasconcelos. After then befriending the Countess, I unlocked a trophy for finding the hidden chalice inside the mausoleum. During my third return to Paris, I revisited the police station where I noticed that Sergeant Mu had been replaced by a guy with an even bigger nose. Apparently, Mu had died, but how could I possibly have time to mourn when I had a trophy to celebrate? <coughs> Thanks to André Lobino at the Crew Museum, I was then directed to the very important Cite de Baphomet. To make a long story short here, I basically had to gain access to a top secret archaeological site by hoodwinking both a guard and a painter with a little help from Nico. Well, she asked for that hunk of a man with the nicotine fingers in his ass hanging out of his pants. 
certainly sounds like me. To end the repeat offender trophy, however, I had to be deliberately sloppy here and repeatedly waste both the painter's and Nico's time. Inside the archaeological site, I had to find a way to reveal the Baphomet's secret and earn another trophy. I then returned to Spain and gave the chalice back to the Countess before I headed over to the mausoleum and found a mysterious key inside the medieval candle. In the search for the Countess's missing ancestors and chess piece, I'm not sure what was more important to her, George and the Countess found out that they needed to locate the property's old well. I'll just have another look around. Very well. With a little help from Lopez, I found the well, the chess piece and the ancestors, but who cares. The Countess got closure, and I got a trophy. Which meant that I had made it to the final section of the game. On the train to Bannockburn, Scotland, I simply had to exhaust all dialogue options with the mysterious old lady to earn the shared history trophy. It was then time for the moment of truth. As I stood before the final interactable character in the game, it was time to find out if I had remembered to try and prank every single character I had come across. Thank God. After encountering Guido on the train, I returned to George and Nico's cabin only to find both Nico and the old lady missing. So it was time for George to play the action hero and save Nico's life. And me? I got the action hero trophy. Just before Broken Sword, the Shadow of the Templar's grand finale, there was one more easily missable trophy to earn. That's right, I got the Coping Mechanism trophy for putting the Clown Nose on the Gargoyle. All that was left for me to do now was foil the Neo Templar's evil plans and enjoy the ending, and at the end of the credits... I got the Broken Sword trophy, which of course meant... This remaster is the GOAT, pun intended, and I enjoyed every second of it, both in the present and in the past. Here's hoping that Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror will get the exact same treatment, because that's my personal favorite in the Broken Sword series. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.